A lot of local students will be heading off to college in a couple of months, and while this is an exciting time for parents and their kids, it can also be a really stressful time and one that's filled with a lot of anxiety. News Force Anyang spoke to a psychiatrist to get some guidance during this period of transition. What can you tell parents about the change they'll experience? I'd say be prepared for a mix of almost every emotion under the sun. You're going to have feelings of excitement. You're excited for the future of your kid. You're excited that they graduated. You're looking forward to seeing what's next for them. But at the same time, you're anxious. You're anxious about how it's going to go. You want to make sure that they thrive and don't fall flat on their face. And you're also anxious about what this is going to mean for your relationship. Are things with your significant other going to change? Probably. Are they going to get better? Are they going to get worse? There might be some grief that you feel because you're worried about the change in the relationship with your child? Are you going to talk to them as much? Is there going to be some distance that grows between you? So there is just a range of emotions. I would just say, look, all emotions pretty much are going to be considered normal. And just like what I say for grief, the only wrong way to grieve is to not allow yourself to feel the emotions. Also a term called empty nest syndrome. What is that and can it be serious? Empty nest syndrome is basically this term for people who no longer have, have kids at home, right? And so there's just this, um, it's a term to basically apply to some of these more negative emotions that people feel, the loneliness, the guilt, the anxiety. So, you know, I think that when somebody experiences some major transition in their life, and this goes for everything, not just for empty nest syndrome, you really need to allow yourself a couple of months. You need to recognize it's a big adjustment and it's normal to have some challenges. I'd say that if the challenges though are really impairing your functioning, then of course you need to seek some help. But it, you should really anticipate that it's generally going to take a couple months for you to get your footing and sort of get into the new rhythm of your new life. A child leaving home also can impact all the relationships in the family, the family dynamic. How does it specifically affect marriages? We all know people who are around our age, their kids go off, they've waited to, till this time before they decide they want to separate or divorce. While that certainly does happen, with the scant number of studies that have been done on this topic, fortunately the data is pretty good and actually the majority of people will feel like their relationship improves when they become empty nesters or when their kid goes off to school. And it kind of is obvious you have more time for yourself, you're less stressed, and you have more time to devote to the relationship. So, Dr. Weiner, any advice for parents to help deal with these big changes? Well, I think the more you can think about this ahead of time and be prepared, the better. So a few things here. One would be thinking about, you know, particularly for stay-at-home moms, they really have a big struggle because so much of their focus has been on raising their kids. So it's a little harder for them. But I think really trying to figure out what's my identity going to be besides being a mom? What are some of the interests that I have? What are things that I could start getting involved in? Thinking about maybe having some conversations with your significant other about sort of your feelings. Maybe you do talk about how you're a little nervous about how it's going to go because you don't have the kids to distract each other from the from the relationship. And then I do think it's good to have a conversation with your kid before you go to sort of set some expectations. You could tell them, hey, look, it's really important to me that we continue to have this nice relationship. I don't want to be a pest but I do want to stay close with you. Like, what's that look like for you? What do you think? How often would you like to talk or FaceTime or whatever or, or text with each other? And so you have some expectations ahead of time, which I think will be helpful for everybody involved. Uh, good reminder, I'm going to have to have that conversation with my son. How often am I allowed to text him? All right, Dr. <laughs> exactly. Joshua Weiner, thanks so much for that great advice. Thanks, son.